Good morning, everyone. One of the things that we do at NUS Enterprise is to conduct research on the dynamics of technological innovation in Asia with the aim to generate actionable insights that hopefully will help us uh, stay close to the uh, cutting edge. And today, I want to share with you three major trends that have emerged from our research on innovation landscape in Asia. And I call these sort of three mega ships. Next slide. Yeah, so the first shift is really about the dramatic change in the geographic location of innovation activities from the advanced Western economy to Asia. Next. Uh, one way to... Next slide. One way to think about this is to look at the number of patents granted by the U.S. Patent Office to uh, inventors around the world. This is a useful indicator because U.S. is the largest market in the world, and as such, any invention that has commercial value will be filed for protection in the U.S. As you can see from here, that over the last three and a half decades, the total number of patents granted by U.S. Patent Office has increased by about four times. However, if you look at the uh, if you look at the blue bar, it shows that the share of Asia has increased by two and a half times. It was one out of seven patent in the early period, and now it's one out of three. But what is most dramatic, if you look at the red bar, which refers to uh, patenting coming out of non-Japan Asia, this has increased by 45 times, from 0.3% to uh, almost 14%. Next. Uh, if you dive down, you see that uh, this shape has occurred in two waves. The first is a move from Japan to uh, the Asian needs, Taiwan, Korea, Singapore, and Hong Kong. But in the more recent 10, 15 years, it has gone rapidly to China and India. Next. And if you see that today, Korea, Taiwan has the same innovation intensity as Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong is somewhere in between, but of course, most of the other emerging economies are still way far behind. They, they are growing faster, but still, to a large extent, uh, way behind uh, the other countries. Next. So in Southeast Asia, for example, you can see that Singapore is the dominant player in innovations. We account for 70% of the uh, patent generated, and there's a small decline in recent years, but still Singapore is the dominant hub. Next. What I want to also show you is another interesting trend is that not only is the quantity of innovation activities improving, increasing rapidly in Asia, but the quality has shifted. In the first phase of change, the quality of the invention actually gone down as measured by uh, forward citations. But in recent years, it starts to pick up. And this actually has continued, and you can predict that uh, Innovations in Asia are coming out with increasingly high quality. There are many other uh, aspects of the change that I won't have time to go into, but uh, I would like to move on to the next trend. Next. So the second big shift is really the result of the digital revolutions transforming the landscape of innovations. And it's best to think about it from going from innovation in the hardware to innovation in the software. Next. Now, some of you may have noticed that, of course, software become pervasive, but you may not realize that many software inventions are now patentable. And as you can see from this graph here, that uh, today, one out of five patents granted by the U.S. Patent Office is in the form of software. This is comparing to one out of 25 just 15 years ago. Next. And so, the revolution about digital uh, you know, technology is really about the shift to software. As you can see, software was only about a quarter of ICT inventions, but today it's a half. Next. Now, the big interesting uh, change is that I have told you earlier that Asia is increasing rapidly its share in innovation in the world, but in the case of software, Asia is actually declining. 
US is still the dominant player and continue to be strong. And as you can see from this picture here, the big ship is really Japan. Japan's share of the world's software pattern has dropped from 30% to less than 15%. Now you can see why many of the Japanese companies from Panasonic, NEC, you name it, hardware-based company are struggling because increasingly innovation is moving into software. Now the Asian needs are making up for some of these uh, drops, but still on balance, Asia is falling behind in software innovations. Next. Now, China and India have been major players in software innovations, but there's a very different in pattern. In India, more than half of the increase in patenting is in software. In China, it is uh, much less, as you can see here. Next. This VC chart tells you where the major growth area of software is. As you can see, in this case, that the things that uh, we all identify with, for example, mobile and telecom uh, application and platform technologies is growing rapidly. Location-based services is growing rapidly. Uh, you can also see cyber security and uh, audio visual technologies growing rapidly. These are the high growth area of software inventions. Next. Right, along with the rise in the software patenting, you see an even faster rise in uh, dispute among the software patent owners. This graph shows you the rapid rise in uh, legal cases involving software patent. Next. And this PC chart tells you that, uh, especially in the mobile industries, just about everybody who is anybody is suing somebody else or getting sued. And this relates to one challenge of software pattern is that the claims and scope of software is actually very hard to determine and there are a lot of uncertainties. And this actually gives rise to a lot of difficulty to understand your innovation strategy. And where Asia is lagging behind is really not just in the innovation itself, but understanding how do you scope the claim of your invention, how do you actually make it patentable. And that this is an, an, an area that increasingly uh, Asia needs to catch up on. Next. So I want to now move on to talk about the third big shift, which is the shift from ivory tower to tech hot bay and I'm talking about the role of the universities in Asia. Next. Now, in the past, when you think of the top university in Asia, whether it is Tsinghua or Beida in China or Tokyo in uh, Todai in, in Japan, you think of them at many uh, research centers, but not anymore. The, these universities have been transformed into major innovation technology and spin-off commercialization hub. One indicator to look at this is the extent to which the top universities in Asia now are patenting. As you can see from this chart, in the advanced uh, countries like US and Europe, the top universities are growing their patent portfolio only slightly faster than the economy as a whole. In Asia, the top universities are patenting at enormously fast rate, and even in Japan, the university are patenting at three times the rate of the economy. Next. The other way to think about the growing role and involvement of university in technology commercializations is the extent to which universities begin to co-publish with industry, which is an indication of the relevance of their research for industry. As you can see from this graph, over the last 10 years, the proportion of paper published by professors are increasingly done with private industry. Next. Now, this is my last and very busy chart, but it kind of tells you that the top universities in Asia are innovating, but their strategy are quite different from those of the top universities in the Western country. Uh, the inner circle here are the benchmark that show the uh, level of the uh, top 20 leading universities in the world, but normalized to have a weight of one score of one, yeah? and this tells you where the Asian universities and as well as the top nine Chinese universities are 
performing relative to these top universities. What you can see here, for example, is that while the Asian universities are doing less science-based innovations, as measured by the fact that they, are, they score much lower on science-based, they are much more strongly focusing on what we call fast-moving technology fields, like uh, software, like uh, electronics, IT, some fields of biotech. They are doing much, much higher rate of, uh, of inventing in this area compared to even the top universities like Stanford and MIT. And you can see that the rate of patenting of this top university is faster, but more importantly, even the quality of their patent are beginning to actually uh, be better than those coming out from the top American and European universities. They also have different emphasis. There are a lot more core patenting with industry. And also, while they are now uh, less specialized than the top American and Western universities, they are slowly uh, identify key area that they were focusing. So the trend is also towards specializations. So I hope this very brief tour of some uh, statistics about the innovation landscape give you some key insights about what are important things to, to keep in mind. First, the geographic relocation of innovation activities from the Western advanced country to Asia. If you are serious about innovation, you have to be in Asia. Secondly, the move from hard to soft. When we talk about the Internet of Things, it's, it's not so much about innovation of the things themselves, but it's of the software intelligence that are embedded in these things or the network that connect them. So increasingly, it's in the software, it's in the uh, business process intelligence. And finally, universities have become major hotbed for technology innovations and if you are from the private sector, if you are a startup, you have to think about how to leverage this technology from the universities to accelerate your uh, commercial performance. On that note, I would like to just say that this interface itself is a manifestation of the fact that NUS, like the other leading universities in Asia, are trying to really reach out to uh, the industry. And I do hope that uh, you would uh, spend more time to think about how you can collaborate and work with the universities. Thank you very much.